a video helping you to revise the photosynthesis practical, where the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis was investigated. We used a very particular type of plant. It was known as Elodea, otherwise referred to as Canadian pondweed. The reason why we used this pondweed or this aquatic plant was so that we could visualize the bubbles of oxygen being produced. Counting the oxygen bubbles enabled us to measure the rate of photosynthesis. So we were varying light intensity during this practical. Light intensity was increased by moving the Elodea closer towards the lamp. The temperature was maintained at a constant 25 degrees Celsius. You know that plants have an optimal temperature range of between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. You must say that the temperature was maintained at 25 degrees by using a water bath and this was checked using a thermometer. The next thing we had to ensure was that carbon dioxide was plentiful, that it was not a limiting factor. If your Elodea is not in its own pond water, then using excess sodium hydrogen carbonate ensures that carbon dioxide is plentiful. But the practical seems to work much better when the plant is in its own pond water, so just bear that in mind. So as we said before, we determined our rate of photosynthesis by counting the number of oxygen bubbles that were released in one minute at that particular light intensity. Before all of this, we had to sort out our Elodea or prepare it for the practical, so we cut a stalk at an angle and we removed the leaves near the cut end. To ensure that we could visualise actual bubbles of oxygen being released, the stalk was pinched near the end. And to ensure that our stalk remained well below the water level, a paper clip was gently attached to the leafy end, just to weigh it down. It is most important that you state that you allowed the Elodea to adjust for five minutes to the new light intensity each time you moved it before you started counting the bubbles. So after the five minute adjustment period, we started to count the number of oxygen bubbles that were released in one minute. This was repeated three times for each of the light intensities and the average was calculated. To vary light intensity, we varied the distance the Elodea was from the lamp. The results showed that the closer you got to the lamp, the greater the increase in the release of oxygen bubbles. With increasing light intensity, there was an increase in the rate of photosynthesis. And when the practical was completed, we graphed our results. When you plot your results, you're going to plot increasing light intensity along the x-axis and as you go up the y-axis, increasing rate of photosynthesis. So this graph tells you that as light intensity increased, so too did the rate of photosynthesis up to a point. At a certain point, just where the graph turns, it stopped increasing. This point is known as the saturation point, whereby light intensity is not limiting the rate of photosynthesis. As you pass that saturation point, you can see there's a plateau, a straight line. There is no further increase in the rate of photosynthesis, despite increasing light intensity. Something is preventing a rise in the rate of photosynthesis. So in plain English, this simply means that there is some factor which is preventing the rate of photosynthesis from increasing again and it's not light. So there is some limiting factor. Is it carbon dioxide? There's simply not enough carbon dioxide. Or is it temperature perhaps? Also bear in mind that chlorophyll is damaged at very high light intensities. That could crop up in an exam too. Be aware that at certain light intensities, it varies from plant to plant, the rate of photosynthesis will be matched or equaled by the rate of respiration, and this is known as the compensation point. Good luck in those exams, I hope the video is helping you to revise. Remember, this does not replace your textbook and it never replaces your teacher's guidance.